what's good, y'all? My name is Chris Shreve, a.k.a. C. Shreve the Professor. Welcome again to Who Needs a Classroom podcast. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about gratitude, about being grateful, about being thankful. Um, it's Thanksgiving time of year, and we really should be more thankful kind of every day, as I think we all realize during this holiday. <clears throat> And even though many folks, myself included, were not able to spend this in normal fashion, you know, with family or maybe as we might have pictured, uh, it's still a great time to be thankful for kind of the simple things that we have around us. So I kind of want to talk about the power of gratitude or of you know gratefulness or being thankful. And I think one of the key things is when you're grateful you're you're almost being mindful so if you went outside you might take in a breath of fresh air and be grateful for that which is kind of you know mindful plus one you know you're feeling the fresh air but then you're thankful that you have that or you know the tree or the you know the sound of the birds or whatever you whatever sensory experience you take in you're being grateful for that experience and for that moment and for that that, that being in time and so I think it can, has a connection to mindfulness. Um, you know, saying a prayer of and being thankful is is kind of, in my mind some somehow similar to a meditation. You know, you're kind of being and 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 being in a positive kind of light. I think anytime you're being grateful, it has the power to put you kind of in an abundance mindset as opposed to kind of a scarcity mindset. Because if you're being thankful for something, then you're probably not wanting. You know, if you're doing this, it's hard to encompass two different points of view at the same time. So if you're thankful for this thing, it's hard to at the same time want something else. You know, so you're maybe turning off some of the desire pathway and focusing a little bit more on the, you know, just being glad that I you know, have what I have or, or being glad that I'm here or looking at the moment as an abundance within itself. So I think that gratefulness, that thankfulness, that gratitude mindset shifts you towards abundance. And when you think about how much you have every day, I mean, all I'm surrounded by is abundance. I mean, the ability to do a podcast is is abundance you know 21st century abundance at its finest um so you have to kind of take the good with the bad every day so when you wake up and you look at your to-do list and maybe that's stressing you out and maybe you're worried and you're anxious or you're you're feeling like you're not doing the right things or making the right moves being thankful you know finding a way to be thankful that you have these opportunities find a way to be thankful that that you have these things to be kind of concerned with finding a way to look at it in the right light that it's not so overwhelming that it's more, I don't know, somehow stimulating or somehow inspiring or somehow it gets you to, to go. So I've always heard the term count your blessings. This is one sometimes I'll do if like I can't sleep at night. It's kind of the opposite of a mental to-do list. I used to tell kids in class, don't make a, a worry list at night, a to-do list. Like, I'm, I'm trying to go to sleep. Oh, man, I got to think of all the things I got to do tomorrow. Like, that's going to make you worry as you fall asleep and not going to help your dreams or help you to feel full rest because you're, you're sitting there anxious as you fall asleep. So counting your blessings as you fall asleep is kind of the reverse of that. Think of how many things you have to be thankful for today. You know, those are that's a totally different perspective on life. So think about counting your blessings sometimes. That can do wonders for for you at, you know, I think it's kind of like saying your prayers at nighttime. I mean, it's, it's a similar perspective to that. I think sometimes we understand our blessings in contrast, right? I think we don't have a full understanding of how awesome it is to be able to walk until we have a sprained ankle or a broken leg. Sometimes we don't understand how key our mental health is until we're 
in full duress mode at the end of a semester and you got your exams coming up and you know your relationships are faltering and and that becomes difficult but sometimes we need to realize the thankfulness level way 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 before the loss or the the injury occurs so to speak if it's physical realize that you know every day that to be able to breathe in that fresh air to be able to wake up in the morning to get up out of bed or go take a shower learn, realize these these tiny little things are are huge blessings and that when we approach them with a grateful mindset that they become these little miracles and they end up kind of rescuing us so that you realize those those tough parts are counterbalanced by those little blessings and so you know, don't wait for I think we've all experienced, you know, in the wintertime, you know, getting you know, the regular flu, not corona, but the regular flu or, or cold, a cold and and then, man, you can't wait to get rid of it. And for a couple of days, you're really thankful that that's gone. But we quickly take it for granted, right? We quickly are back to, you know, that's the norm. So I think it's important to to not wait for that contrast it's important to recognize the the connection between having and not just always wanting to have more you know realizing i have a whole lot to be thankful for you know already before i get this next want or this next thing that could you know somehow fulfill me in a different way so i think that's really important you don't have to necessarily always in life have the down times to counter you know, the regular points, you know, the regular looks really good when you counter it with the down times, but the regular in comparison to these super highs that we want to be back at, it looks low. So it's all about perspective. So I think that's a really key thing is, is to be thankful for that and that middle ground because the downs are, are hardcore sometimes. So you don't necessarily have to canyon out to realize that that basic normal level is pretty awesome just because it's not as exciting as, you know, I think the last nine months when you're kind of stuck at home and you're not out and about doing your tour, your shows, or whatever your thing was you were doing, this is less exciting, right? And so, you know, that can can feel like a lower point, but we need to be thankful, right? If you don't have corona, if you have your health, if you, you know, are somehow able to keep your, you know, making a living and taking care of your family, you have a lot to be thankful for there. So the pandemic can obviously help us to kind of gain perspective. I think when we come out of this, when we kind of get back on track, when the world opens up, so to speak, we'll really appreciate that more. So it doesn't have to be the contrast, but the contrast I think is helpful. You know, the highs and the lows really kind of, the dark and the light really kind of help to to juxtaposition and help us to understand how good we have it sometimes and how much we take that for granted. So as you approach your life, as you approach your day-to-day interaction, um, remember to say thank you to folks. This is We can think of this as a macro level, like, you know, truly, um, you know, having your whole attitude be one of gratitude, but we can also think about the micro actions we can have of, of saying thank you to somebody. If somebody holds the door for you, saying thank you to somebody who, who just prepared your food and brought it to you, you know, saying thank you, you know, truly being gracious, um, you know. And sometimes when you think about those micro actions, maybe, you know, at this time of year, maybe around Thanksgiving, around these ideas where we're looking back at the previous 12 months, kind of that's a you know, traditional thing in many cultures around this time of year. As you're looking back, think about, you know, who should you reach out to? Who did you maybe not get in touch with as much this year? Who should you show thanks to? Um, when we're thinking back into previous, you know, thinking way back in like our traditions or going back 5, 10, 15, 20 years, going back to our childhood, you know, reach out to the folks that are a part of that. Re- reach out to that childhood friend you haven't talked to forever. Reach out to that, you know, reach out to mom's, and pops, if you haven't talked to them in a while, you know, reach out to your cousin, reach out to somebody and tell them, you know, thanks. I'm glad you are a part of my life experience. <clears throat> and I wanted to tell you that. <laughs> 
and just keep it that simple. Keep it hot. Keep it moving. Check in with them. Catch up. You know, do what you got to do. But that gratitude, that thankfulness will, it's kind of this this gift that just keeps giving. You know, when you feel that way and you truly show that, you end up kind of feeling it. And then if you were to express it, you'd feel it again. So it's just kind of double goodness, double dip on it. <laughs> um, so in this season where for some folks it's difficult, I, I, I kind of tend to be a person that has a little bit of difficulty with the holidays. I tend to think I would love them and, and you know, I have some great memories of, of Christmas and Thanksgiving and these, these very familial type uh, traditional experiences. And yet being a child of divorce, they also have a lot of pain associated with them for me. It's difficult to kind of reclaim some of those traditions without them feeling somehow um, very raw in terms of some oh, oh, some wounds that haven't even fully healed um, over time. And so that's a difficulty I have with, with the holidays. But finding a way to feel gratitude is one way I find to, to deal with it. So that was just something I wanted to share was that um, – that's a key thing, obviously, in Thanksgiving, the first word is thanks. But truly, you know, um, find a way sometimes to give thanks for the little things you have in life. If you can walk, that's a huge gift. If you can use both hands, that's a huge gift. If your eyes function, if you can hear, if you can listen to music, play music, if you can laugh with family, there's a million things we can be thankful for here every day. And so find a way to share that perspective throughout your life, you know, with yourself. Because <laughs> a lot of times you're, you're hard on yourself or you're, a lot of times you're, you want more. You, you're ambitious or you're, you're looking to improve. And so you might forget how far you've come or how much you have right now. So be thankful, be grateful. Be gracious, show gratitude. You know, this life is, is too short to, to feel bitter, to feel like somebody owes you something, to feel like you don't have enough. So find a way to, to feel thankful for what you do have. Hope you all are well. Thank you for hanging out. Peace out.